here to lightweight panelize. Let's go take a look at this construction style. The crew should follow a load bearing wall as the sounder feels for beams or purlins. Place an indicator hole along your path of travel. This will allow the ventilation crew to monitor into your fire conditions. If the sounder feels a member every eight feet, then the purlin direction has been exposed. If a greater distance between members is felt by sounding, then beam direction has been exposed. An inspection cut is vital for member direction, construction type, and most importantly, safety. The sawyer will cut 45 degrees to an exterior wall, rolling one member when felt. Then perform a head cut to locate the same member if felt. If that member is not felt, the construction type is perpendicular going left to right. The crew should be in a hook saw, hook saw configuration. This allows the crew to separate while keeping a sounder in front. The full back is a common ventilation tactic for this style of roof. This cut will be made by each two person team standing on purlins. The cut should be made from beam to beam, finishing in the direction of your ladder. The sounders will make their way to a beam close to the fire location. Once the beam is found, they will step to the outside, allowing room for the sawyers to cut. The sounders will step around each sawyer to be in position to pull. The first saw will cut a 45 degree line back to the beam. The second sawyer will do the same on the opposite side. The first sawyer will then reach across and make the beginning of a head cut. The second sawyer will reach out and finish the head cut. The sawyers will face each other and begin their parallel cuts, intersecting at the beginning and staying at the same pace. This cut should be made roughly six inches off of the purlin to avoid rafter hangers. The saws will be cutting through the first rafter and stopping at the second. Remove the panel and push it out of the way before the next cut. Let's watch this crew demonstrate a full back cut. We're gonna start with a large triangle cut to place rubbish hooks for pulling. This cut is easier to remember, quicker, and keeps a safer distance between pullers and sawyers. Because we're cutting through rafters, the pullers are essential to remove the panel and not allow it to drop. This will keep it safe for interior crews. The sawyers will now cut through two rafters and then stop. This process will continue until the size of ventilation holes reached or a beam is met. Another option for ventilating panelized construction is a two-person center rafter louver. The sounders will remain in position as the sawyer starts the first cut. Reaching out halfway, the first sawyer will make their parallel cut next to the beam. The second sawyer can meet the first parallel cut once the first sawyer is finished. The first sawyer will make their base cut rolling one rafter, and then the second sawyer would mirror what the first sawyer does. The first and second sawyer will then make their final parallel cuts. Let's watch this crew demonstrate a two-person center rafter louver. Early versions of panelized construction are typically heavier and can exhaust a crew trying to remove panels. Another reason this cut is beneficial to know is during a pre-plan you may notice objects hanging from a roof such as sprinklers. These objects may prevent you from performing a fold back cut. The sounders will leave the panels in place until the sawyers are a couple bays ahead. This limits the amount of smoke and heat into the work environment. Try to push down on the side of the louver from which the wind is coming from. This will help pull fire products from the building instead of forcing fresh air into the building which would increase fire behavior. This process will continue until the proper size hole is met. Remember, always build your ventilation hole towards your ladder. A trench cut on panelized construction should be done standing on a beam or a purlin. When cutting off of a beam, the crew will be working with construction. The first sawyer must reach past the first rafter to start the head cut. This rafter is located two feet from the beam. This cut should go from purlin to purlin before performing a parallel cut. The second sawyer will start the parallel cut when the saws are four feet apart. The second sawyer will then input a base cut to finish the ventilation hole. Always start from a low bearing wall working towards the opposite side. Here's a ventilation crew demonstrating a trench cut off of a beam. 
fire dictates the need for a trench cut, understand that this is a defensive operation and should be done in a timely manner. Switch hands whenever necessary to avoid stepping into a pre-existing hole. The trench should be finished prior to the fire reaching. The 7L cut is being used to perform this operation. Now we're going to talk about a trenching operation against construction. We will be working off of a purlin. The first sawyer will start a head cut, rolling one rafter and stopping at the second. Then inputting a parallel cut to the desired width of the trench. The first sawyer will continue to cut sevens across the roof. Now the second sawyer will perform a parallel cut and then a base cut rolling one rafter. The second sawyer will continue to perform L's across the roof. Do not open up your louvers until the crew is a few cuts ahead. Here's our crew performing a trench cut against construction, working off of a purlin. Notice how the crew stays together and splits the workload. When using the 7L trenching technique, be sure to work from wall to wall in the direction of your egress. 